Hey, it's Wendy. This is Wendy's Prayer to Perfume. Here I talk about what perfume is on my shelf. Um, it's been a whole month. I'm a little sick and congested. We're doing the tea thing. I'm going to talk about what's going to be wearing, what I'm going to be wearing this spring. What's going to be on my perfume tray. It's going to be a little bit of a tray video. It's going to be a little haul, if you will, because some of these are new to my collection and I've hardly wore them or not worn them at all. So I'm not going to be able to describe them very well. Some of them are hey, I may be using this up and not replacing them. So it's a little bit of panning. Some of these y'all have never seen before. Some of these I've been wearing for years, although I'm trying to get away from that a little bit for this one. So, um, and this is not organized per usual, unorganized, unedited, unmonetized, unsupported, and unshelled here at Wendy's Parade. Okay. So I'll just start with some perfumes that I've just gotten, okay, that I'm kind of excited to try and ex kind of excited to wear. So I love cherry blossom perfumes and I love cherry blossom incense and I like the whole idea of Sakura. Oop. So I got this little mini. These are kind of expensive. Got this little mini from Dior. They're cherry blossom fragrance. That's not going to work, is it? No. Anyway, this is Sakura from Christian Dior. It's their cherry blossom fragrance. It has gotten very mixed reviews. Some people are like, this embodies the cherry blossom in bloom in Japan in the spring and the whole artistic idea and the whole motif of the whole thing. And some people are like, this smells like Bath and Body Works. This sucks. It's not worth the price. It's, you know, it's cherry blossom water, blah, blah, blah. So we'll see. I'm going to, it's a dab bottle. So I'm going to decant it and I'm going to find out if this is a worthwhile cherry blossom fragrance because... That is something I really love to wear in the spring. The second perfume I got is L'Ombre Dans L'Eau from Diptyque. The coolest box ever. This is a rose. This is a thorny rose in the garden fragrance. This is also pretty famous. It's one of their older ones because it has a tomato leaf um, note. Um, really pretty bottle. And I love that they're doing this. Isn't that cool? I'm a sucker for packaging. I admit it. I'm not one of those people that's like, the bottle doesn't influence me. Oh, I was influenced. This is really gorgeous. I love this. So worn it a few times. I really like it, but I'm not, you know, I don't know it inside out, but it's going to be something I'm wearing this spring. Something kind of new to my collection that is going to be a really nice lavender, a little bit of a muted lavender to wear that I've gotten in the last six months. This is Living Lelique. Beautiful Lalique bottle per usual. This is a lavender fragrance. It also has a bit of iris in it. It does have a lot of like a cashmere and dry down. Cashmere and being a synthetic, musky, woody type of thing. But it's not too much and it is what it is. But this is really nice and it reminds me of Prada Infusion Diaries a little bit, which is one of my favorites. And I like to wear this during the day and once in a while I like to wear this to sleep. Now, speaking of Prada Infusion Diaries, I talk about that one all the time, but I'm going to talk about this one instead. Praja, Prada Infusion Diaries Iris Cedar. So, Infusion Diaries is a modern classic. This is one of the newer ones that came out in 2015. I don't like, well, let's not get off track, but I don't like the new Infusion Diaries. I like the old one, but this one I do like. This obviously is just what it says. It's Infusion Diaries with a big hit of cedar and a big hit of incense. So instead of having like an iris note and a mastic note, this is just a little bit more woody. Uh, but it still has the bone structure of Infusion Diaries. This also does smell a little bit like the old um, Prada Loam, like Prada Infusion of Man, Prada Loam. For anyone that's missing that, this is a pretty, pretty close, pretty close, uh, I don't want to say dupe, they're in the same. It's a pretty close flanker of the old Prada Loam. But this is a nice alternate to wear um, cedar-wise. And I love wearing woods. And this is still nice and uh, not too much, not too little. Doesn't feel like I'm in some sort of smoky bar. It's not like that level of smoky and woody and stuff like that. So Prada Infusion Diaries Cedar. So speaking of cedar, I'm going to have to talk for a few minutes about this next perfume because it's in my top three for life. This is Clinique Aromatics Elixir. Yes, I'm picking it as a spring perfume. Yes, I am working on two open bottles at the same time. Um, this is the slightly newer one. And this one, I can tell that it's older because the way this cap is. This smells a little bit darker and richer. This is a 
hint, if you can call it lighter, it's a hint lighter. So depending on what mood I'm in, this is how much you know you love a perfume, right? So we had a really bad ice storm here a couple of months ago, and it's really devastating. It's like the worst ice storm I've seen since the 80s, since I was a kid. Trees down. It was horrible. There was this one day I was walking my dog, and it was foggy, but springtime. So it's like really foggy, and the air is thick. And it's warm enough, it's like 45, 45 degrees a shout, but cool enough that people have their fireplaces on. Um, all this down wood is down. People lost cedar trees, people lost oak trees, people lost maple trees, people lost uh, white pines. I live in Michigan, white pines really pop, are really popular even to grow in people's yards. And people were sawing these logs away. These trees just came down, they're dying. Um, not the happiest day. Not the happiest thing. It's a hor Ice storms are horrible. Um, but I was wearing Aromatics Elixir. And this is roses and geranium and patchouli and clary sage and basil leaves and herbs and vetiver and sandalwood and oak moss, oak moss balm. And this just went with that. It went, you know, I, where I live, like I said, I live in Michigan, upper Midwest. It gets cold here. Um, springs are cold. But this just fit that day. I could still smell smoke from people's fireplaces. I could smell all that wood from the down trees. I could smell that damp spring air that was still cold and foggy. Um, and I was like, this is it. I usually wear this in colder weather, but I've been wearing this a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, ever since that walk, actually. I wear this a lot anyway, but this really fit the mood. This is, this is a moody perfume. This is a magic perfume. And, uh, I'm a big fan of Aromatics Elixir. So Aromatics Elixir has been front and center this spring so far. So switching gears yet again. Um, one of my bedtime perfumes in the winter is usually Mongrelan. That's getting a little heavy. This has been my bedtime perfume recently. This is Lolita Lampica Lo N Blanc. L-E-A-U, B-L-A-N-C, Whitewater. Some people... Um, they think this is a little bit too juvenile even. I really like this. I don't find it to be juvenile. It's light. It's uh, violets and iris. Um, and being Lolita Lampica, it has that like green Artemisia note in it too. It's really soothing. It's really herbal. Um, it is a little bit sweet because there's some fruit notes in it because it's technically a gourmand. But where it's really light, it's just a, it's just a dream to wear to bed me right to sleep it's very soothing so this has been my bedtime perfume this spring uh this is actually pretty new to my shelf this is anicutal le temp de Rives, which is an orange blossom perfume this is done in their old style it's very ephemeral it's very natural smelling it's like a citrus cologne i don't want to say citrus but it's like an orange blossom cologne with a lot of white flowers like tuberose and things like that uh can't do a full review i've only worn it a few times but uh, so far, I really loved it, and new pot, new bottles, new repackaging. But so far, so far, so good. So thank you for keeping this perfume house intact, Pacific Amora Group, <laughs> who bought Anikutal out. But I've been wearing this here and there this spring too. Oh, see, this is a bottle of neglect. I pulled this out a couple weeks, a couple months ago for another video. But this is an old bottle of L'Instant from Guerlain. This is the most fabulous magnolia perfume in the entire world if there needs to be a number one in magnolia this is it this is magnolia and this is honey and it's just so pretty it's just a beautiful fruity floral yeah i said it fruity floral it's stunning it's girl on perfect for spring perfect for spring perfect for spring dresses very feminine very lovely mm. my throat's starting to hurt and i have so many perfumes to go Let's do a couple vintages. Y'all remember this perfume? This is Sublime from Jean Petou. Uh, I have like nine bottles of this because <laughs> I'm one of those people. Uh, this came out in 1992 and this is a stunner. It's really rich. It's really strong. It's a lot of like ylang ylang and oranges with tons of white flowers. It is a happy, joyful, yellow perfume. The color of this perfume is yellow. Um, this being a bottle from the 90s, it does dry down a little darker. Um, there's definitely oak moss and sandalwood in the dry down. I should do a whole review of this perfume. Uh, it's so rich and it's so amazing. Like the person 
that made this perfume. His name is Jean Carlio, I think. He like works at the Osmotech now. You know, he's he's really up there. He really knows what he's doing. I love this vintage perfume and I love to wear it in the spring because it is like the perfume of happiness. Okay, this is a little bit of an oddball. This is vintage and it's niche, in my opinion. There's this company called Fragrances of Ireland. And they're from Ireland and they make perfume. This is the only one I have from them. They have another perfume called Irish Rose that I really want to buy. They're still in production. They're very affordable. A full bottle costs like 45 bucks. This is um, Konamara. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. But this is a perfume that is supposed to represent the Irish countryside. This smells like a little bit 80s. This is from the 1980s. It smells like wildflowers. It smells like green grasses. It smells like fresh air. It has a like a little bit of a lotiony smell, and it also smells like a tinge of hairspray. I don't know, like you're wearing some aquanet and walking in a field of wild wildflowers. But the flowers are really nice. Point being, I don't want to make this sound too artificial, but point being, this is a really nice rendition of wildflowers, which is not easy to find and it's not easy to do. And uh, yeah. I really like to wear this in the spring. So that is fragrance. A little shout out to Fragrances of Ireland. Konamara. I don't really think I have a lot more niche to go. I usually don't. Uh, we'll keep on the niche though. This is a rose perfume from Le Parfum de Rosine. This is one of their rose perfumes. I think it's just called La Rose. Yeah, it's just called La Rose. I'm still getting to know this fragrance. It's a pretty straightforward La Rose perfume. Um, it just smells like a lot of rose essences blended into the bottle. I like that. Not everybody is. It kind of fades out into nothing. It doesn't mean that it's a weak perfume or anything, but there's not a lot going on. It's like a very linear rose scent, um, which I'm in the mood for. And it's not deep and dark and velvety and anything like that though it's a it's pretty it's straightforward but not overly heavy so i have been wearing this a lot i'm not a ringing endorsement i guess because I'm, I'm still getting to know it again this is like a perfume tray doesn't mean i love every single one yet um oh i mention this all the time i'm wearing this today kelly kalash by hermes eau de toilette eau de toilette's perfect for spring the eau de parfum is better for uh other seasons but this is like my green tea and like horseback riding perfume because of the letter <laughs> the leather in it i don't know i just think that's kind of funny that's an indie perfume we'll put this away um i'm sorry to do this but i just have a fra uh, fragrance scent sample of this this is valentino donna rosa verde i missed the boat on this one this is already discontinued this is like a rosy green tea citrus musk mallow and brett um like light floaty uplifting perfume i can't i really like the way this smells this smells like a lot like a green like a rose green tea perfume a citrus rose green tea but it is really light and i feel like i don't need to run out and get it because I can get it somewhere else for a little better or a little cheaper. It's like running over $100 now. This is really disappearing. So I don't think I'm going to chase this down. I think Project Pan here, I think I'm going to use up this sample. I really enjoy it. It's a beautiful perfume, but I don't think I'm going to repurchase it. And that was Valentino Donna uh, Rosa Verde. So I can use that up. I'm trying to use things up this year. Oh, gosh, sorry. Something is in my eyeball. Like, really? I may have to refilm this whole thing. Nope, moving on. Oh, I really like this one. This is Chanel Paris Duvel. They're a Colony waterline. This is, ah, oh, God, I love Chanel. If I had to get, if I had to narrow down to three houses on my shelf, Chanel would be one of them. Obviously, girl, I'm the other one. Who knows what the third one would be, though? I don't know. Um, this is Orange Blossom, and it has, like, a green basil leaf. And it also has like some other white flowers and it has a little bit of like a like sparkling woody dry down. But this is very light and effervescent and pretty and great for warmer weather. 
and yet sophisticated because it's Chanel. And I highly recommend Chanel Duville for the spring. Uh, my voice is giving out. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Another one in the same line, although not in the same way. I consider this, this is not a, a, a dig on Dior, but this is Dior forever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. There's also a perfume from Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth Taylor called Forever and Ever. And I find that to be a little bit morbid. Like, that's something you would say at someone's funeral. Forever and ever. Or a wedding. Maybe this is supposed to be a wedding. Maybe my brain is just... I actually think they're talking about weddings, not funerals. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, it's saying hello, not saying goodbye. Anyway, this is another fruity floral. It's kind of like a pleasant shampoo fruity floral. It has, like, a lot of freesia. And there's all sorts of, like, cyclamen. And, you know, there's, like, nine different versions of this because it's Dior. It's what they do. Um... So the note lists all over the are all over the place, but this is just a very pleasant shampoo floral and wears great in the spring and it's really beautiful and it's really pretty and uh, easy reach. Out of all of these, this is probably the easiest reach um, that I will wear in the spring. Let's do this is kind of old school too. This is from Hobagon. I really like wearing um, Calcus Fleurs Royale in the spring. It's one of the best tuberose perfumes I have. So, a little trivia. So, the world... Oh, this smells so pretty. Oh, my God. This is... Oh, my God. It's really an amazing perfume company. I'm really glad that they're still around. So, back in the day, because Hobogon is actually an older perfume company, not like Creed where they're fake about it, and lots of other companies that pretend to be old. So, they're an old perfume company, and back in the day, all perfumes were like solophores, right? They were just one flower. You could go to the chemist or the pharmacy or whatever, and you can pick up a rose perfume or a violet perfume or, you know, whatever. They were pretty simple. People were perfumed forever, but they just weren't like this. So this, you know, this whole idea of having more than a few flowers blended, it was like groundbreaking back in the day. Because the original, this perfume isn't that that old, but the original perfume from this is called just Calcus Fleurs, and that is from like 1915 or something. It's really old. But anyway, I digress. Not saying a lot about this scent, but it's one of the best tuberose fragrances I have ever, ever worn. The other one I like to wear right now, this is kind of new to my collection too. Again, haul. Um, this is Iris de Champs. De Champs? Is it? I'm sure it's Champs, but anyway, this is um, their Iris perfume. And I cannot per afford $600 of Pure Parfum. But I can't afford little samples on eBay. So that's what I have. This is a very white rendition of the iris root. Uh, there's a lot of like, it's like a, it's not rooty and earthy. It's like an iris perfume surrounded by white florals. The Eau de Toilette has more orange blossom and Lily of the Valley. This is a little bit more straightforward and like punchy about the whole thing. Um, but really beautiful iris scent. I like wearing that a lot right now. Uh, time for a little indie. Um, I like this company called Urban Root, not Urban Root, but Herbs, H-E-R-B-S, and Root. This is called Santal. I don't know why, though, because this is a Palo Santo perfume, and I'll just show you what it says on the back just for ease. It is Palo Santo and cedar and a hint of leather um, and a hint of sandalwood. This is very naturally blended. If I just want to wear a straightforward woody perfume, I wear this. This does smell like, not burning Palo Santo, but it smells like the green stick of wood. Um, and this is like 29 bucks. I got this off of Etsy. I have a couple of her perfumes. Um, so highly recommended if you're looking for an easy to wear Palo Santo perfume. That's not heavy on the incense. And also incidentally, no woody aroma chemicals in this. This is not like, oh, we put a bunch of ISOE super in here. We're calling it this random wood. No, this is the real deal. Um, thus, it wears a little light, wears a little um, short. But number one, it's 29 bucks. And number two, it's the real deal. So I really like this Sandal perfume um, or Santal perfume from Urban Root. So these are the two men's perfumes I've been wearing lately. This one, I don't know if I'm going to keep. Um, this is... Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. I really like this, but parts of it, I wish it was just a little bit more and a little and a little bit not what it is. <laughs> um, this is an iris perfume, and the notes list are tons of like 
spices like clove and cinnamon and things like that. Um, this is like an iris dusted with some black pepper. There is a hint of clove and cinnamon and things like that. But while the iris is nice and I enjoy the spicy iris, like this is an actual spicy iris, which is pretty cool. As it dries down, it just turns into a like a soft vanilla tonka bean scent. And the whole composition is really nice, but I wish it just leaned more toward being a really cool off the wall spicy iris versus like, hey, it's good for an hour or two. And then it kind of peters off into it. Admittedly nice vanilla perfume, but I have so many vanilla Tonka perfumes that just kind of dry down into this. So I'm on the fence of whether to wear this or not. This also does another thing that's interesting about this is that it has like a very forested uh, tolu balsam note, which I detect very heavily. But again, it only lasts like in the first hour and it none of those spices and interesting parts stay with the perfume. It's like it wears amazing for an hour and then it kind of goes Meh, vanilla basic, you know. However, this is a really nice perfume and I may just keep it because I don't get rid of my likes. This is really nice for me. Some people online think this is, are on Fragrantica. They think it's really strong. I think this is perfect for spraying because it's not too much. Like I said, I don't find the spices to be overpowering. This is like a spicy forested iris, which is very unique. It's a really pretty, lovely perfume. Um, I don't know. I'll read the reviews. I don't find this to be, even though this says gentleman, very manly, if you will, but not so manly that any woman that likes that sort of thing couldn't wear it. So on the fence on that one. Okay, we survived 20 minutes in. Um, my voice is going. So Shed a Tear for Bottega Veneta. Um, their designer, but I like a lot of their perfumes. And they're just not, I don't know why, because I feel like I'm not alone, but they're getting rid of their perfumes. Like they're, they're done. They're not going to do that anymore. They're going to make bags or whatever it is they do. I don't even know. Um, sorry. I told you I'm not organized today. I was like, I haven't posted in a month. I just need to get on there. Um, this is their men's perfume, um, Essence Aromatique Pour Homme. This is another woody perfume. It is a cologne, so it's very light, very springy, very appropriate for spring as far as how it wears. This has a lot of cedar and sandalwood. It also has white rose in it. This also has pine needle, pine needle and fir tree. So it's like a woody forested perfume that surrounds a white rose. It's so beautiful. Um, and I bought this on a rash. I think this is the huge bottle. <laughs> this is this. Okay, I did buy the 200 ml bottle, but I was I was doing that. They're going out of business and I can't find it. It's discontinued. I'm going to buy the biggest one because it's only $10 more. So I'm never going to be out of this, right? Um, I can't do a full review. I can't do it to do justice because I just got it a couple months ago. But hey, Bucky. But um, get it while you can. This is really pretty and very unisex. And I don't think that... I think any woman that likes to wear a true woody perfume because this is the problem with a lot of woody perfumes nowadays they put a bunch of woody aroma chemicals in there and they call it a woody perfume i love woody perfumes this to me is a very natural woody perfume um it's really soft reminds me of being in the woods it has a hint of floral in it too it's really lovely so check it out the price is not too crazy yet um the women's version is really nice too that actually is a little spicier it has coriander in it i've had that for a while but um this has also been a really nice spring perfume and we got through it. It's been a month. I'm going to try to post next week too, because I finally made a compilation, uh, a whole list of perfumes that I think would go with the white tennis dress motif. And that is going to be my next video. And I'm going to get my stuff together. I've just had some things going on as we all, as we all do. Anyway, if you stuck with me for that long, I mean, Hey, you don't have to sit around for commercials. You don't have to sit around for me, like shilling anything. It's just me and my perfumes. That's it. And nothing more. And my dog sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, this has been Wendy's Parade. What have you been wearing this spring? What's new in your collection? What are you trying to use up? What are you on the fence about? What's on your tray? You know that whole thing. Just let me know. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.